My name is Lenora Claire. I am an art curator, I'm an entertainment journalist, occasionally I'm a model, occasionally a performance artist. I've been um, a lot of small parts in big movies and a lot of big parts in small movies. My business card is a superstar, so I don't limit myself, and whatever conversation I had with you is what I do. I was about six months old when my family moved to Los Angeles. My father's a doctor, my mother's a nurse. I think that something really clicked for me when I discovered Betty Page. It's something about it I identified with because I got breasts really early, like fourth grade already wearing a bra. I, was, I think actually, no, by fourth grade I was wearing like a D-cup. I also discovered punk rock around that time and then I got super goth. I was a very, very wild kid, just doing all kinds of crazy stuff that you just don't want your 13 year old doing. If I want to go to Tijuana on the back of a Vespa, that's what I'm going to do. I'd like to welcome you to my pink palace of pleasure, my studio apartment in Los Feliz. We have an illustration of me by Glenn Hansen. This is my vanity table, a watercolor by my, my friend Gidget Gein, who passed away. When he gave it to me, like shortly after, he said, oh, uh, I peed in the watercolor a little bit. And then just a little further down, I have one of my many portraits by Austin Young. I've had to limit myself as to how many portraits of myself I have in my house. I, I decided to keep it down to three. It seemed like a reasonable amount, like four walls, three pieces that, I don't know, it worked for me. And then in 2007, I purchased the nude oil portrait of B. Arthur by Chris Zimmerman. I purchased it for $100 on eBay. I was looking for some Golden Girls DVDs. I saw it, thought it was amazing, and I was fortunate enough to win it, and it changed my life. I just, everyone would see it hanging over my bed, and they were repulsed, disgusted, infuriated couldn't stop laughing and I just knew I was onto something with it. So I decided to curate an entire show with 40 pieces based off the theme of erotic interpretations of the Golden Girls. And it just blew up and I got 2,000 people there and 30 out of 40 pieces sold on opening night and incredible amounts of press and that really kickstarted my career as a sort of controversial art curator. I was doing shows for a while for World of Wonder Gallery, the World Erotic Museum in Miami, and sort of pop-up type stuff all over, but I'm really excited to finally have a home for my art. I'm about to open an art gallery with a friend of mine named uh, Phyllis Navidad. This is the gallery and it's rough. It's the, the roughest stage that it'll ever be in. The idea behind it was transformation. It's called Pop-Tart. Totally is the perfect name for it. Like, yes, there's pop art elements, but it's kind of weird and sickly sweet, and it's, it'll last forever like a pop tart. This is the front door now, facing the street. The history behind it is that uh, Phil's mother, she acquired the, the property sometime in the early 90s. And through here, this is probably going to be like our nook area, like probably where we'll get a computer, um, just sort of like office space, pretty much logistical stuff like that. I had the opportunity to look at the space after my mom came to me and said, look, I have to rent this out. I don't know what to do with it anymore. Will you help me? And I said, of course. And I saw the opportunity to make it something that could be profitable, but at the same time cultural and um, meaningful. That's when he approached me and said, you know, I have this opportunity to use the space, and I think a gallery is a perfect thing for it. Our personalities are actually very complementary towards one another, and it's been really supportive and cool, and all the things that maybe like I'm lacking, what, what you, he's he's got the goods, and, and vice versa. So it's just been really so. So far, it's been really natural and easygoing. And I hope I can say that six months from now. I don't want to like her, but like it's been really, it's been really good. Technically the way we break it down is I'm the head curator, so everything involving selection of art, the way artists are handled, sales, all that kind of, that's, that's what I do. And then all the business things, Phil having all this experience working for his mother since he was a little kid, he's going to kind of, kind of do that stuff. My name is Phil Bandel. I also go by Phyllis Navidad. Phyllis is like my alter ego when it comes to what I do artistically. Right now, I'm finishing my fashion degree, so she was my outlet for dresses and costumes and um, looks and all that stuff. Originally, when I brought Lenora into the space, it was pretty much it was an, an office, office space. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, you know, it was blue carpeting, there wasn't any track lighting, and I was like, We have to completely fix the floor. We need to paint everything, decide how the signage is gonna be. We haven't even figured that out yet. Literally from the, the bottom to the top, the inclusion of track lighting. 
The bathroom has, it's, there's nothing in the bathroom. All the fixtures have to be put in. The piping was so old, and this is the good stuff, actually, comparatively to what we pulled out of there. Then there's the exterior. We have to completely repaint it. We have to take down the existing awning and um, put up new uh, vinyl signage. So it's a lot to do in 30 days. But there's a lot, a lot of work. Every possible thing that needs to get done construction-wise uh, has yet to be done. But I want, okay, I want to do something really exciting for people. Okay, okay. That's what I want to talk to you about because I don't think it's going to be like what you're expecting. I came up with this idea. Maybe sounds a little weird. I just couldn't believe it when he told me that this is what he wanted to do. That's more Warhol than Warhol. <laughs> <laughs>